Oh my goodness, I'm not alone. You guys are early. <laughs> I haven't even put on my lipstick and you're already there. Hold on. Yes, so you're included. I had to get some Hi. coconut chai. Yay! I'm drinking, <laughs> I'm drinking Soulmate. I, I did, um, this is a chocolate raspberry rose. I think I gave some to you guys. But... Yes. Yeah, we got some of that. I'm just not a big chocolate fan. Yeah, it's really um, been good for me because I'm putting, uh, I'm, I'm doing a little quarantine uh, 15, I think. So this is <laughs> helping me not eat chocolate. <laughs> oh, I had mine shipped to me. <laughs> Your chocolate? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Lulu's chocolate. And oh, they were out that. of it down at the store. And so I just ordered it online. I have a big shipment if you want any. Okay, yeah. We'll have to, you, you have to drop it on the porch and yep. the will will arrive. <laughs> awesome. So um, great. Lisa's here. Jennifer Delatour enjoying Jasmine Moon. Serafina, I just got my first order from you. Um, but it's also beautiful. Can't wait to try. Yay. Well, good. Well, welcome to the third or fourth Saturday Sips, um, what, however long we've been in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it seems timeless. 5,000th and 80th uh, <laughs> Saturday Sips. So um, I'm so grateful and so overjoyed to welcome Gay and Katie Hendricks. Um, Alexandria in New York is saying four weeks for us, yeah. So, um, and now it's been extended to May 15th um, here in California. Um, so we have uh, another month of spring um, quarantine. And uh, so what I would love to chat about today is, um, you know, is Gay and Katie are my business partners in Magic Hour. They're, they've been my mentors and relationship gurus with Gerard for 15 years or more. Um, and just the way you guys move through the world has illuminated the path for not only me, but millions of others. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, Haddis is here from Germany. Good to see you again, sweetheart. It's the middle of the night for her. So they always, she, she always makes an exception. Um, but, but what, how are you two moving through the, the great change? How is it, you know, how's conscious living and all of your teachings serving you during all of this? <laughs> Well, it is really, well. really, really <laughs> well. Um, we, it, it is as if everything that we have studied and experimented with was made for right now. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we've heard from so many couples and from so many families who have been using the tools of transparency, emotional transparency, and how to solve problems without making anybody wrong and all the things. So... You know, it's like <laughs> almost human beings are made for challenges like this mm -hmm. to try to bring things up out of us. And so um, our lives have, we just came back from a walk. And so we've been, as many people have, leading a very quiet, home-centered <laughs> life and not going out very much. But frankly, I'm a writer and a bit of a germ phobic. So my life hasn't changed <laughs> all that much. I wash my hands all the time anyway and I spend most of my time... <laughs> <laughs> writing and occasionally I talk on Zoom. So that's pretty much my life. Yep. And uh, so today on our walk, instead of going out to the right, we went out to the left and we big, went around the other way. It was a big pattern interrupt. Big radical change there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I noticed is that um, several months ago, I would wake up in the morning and I'd have this just right away, my stomach would clench and I'd have this you know, just this feeling, and I knew it wasn't me exactly, but those, and, and since all of this has happened, I haven't wakened up scared in the morning, because here we are. It's like, you know, everything that it had been floating around is now here, and using particularly this pattern interrupt of the pause, yeah. having a, uh, everything that drives people, the whole adrenaline and rush and doing, doing and getting your value from doing, that's a massive interruption. And I've really been luxuriating one in getting a lot of rest. And I noticed, Zena, you look rested. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, this, there's this sense of, ah, there's nothing more important than being and finding the pace of being together and being separate. One of the things we've noticed is that our study of 
what we call the glommers and the splitters, those who love to be close, the glommers and the splitters, those who must have their space, has been very useful because even in quarantine, I think it's really important for each of us, particularly to find solo time where there's not stimulation and, uh, you know, even in the midst of a day when we're, you know, basically together. And so we do that. We go to other ends of the house and uh, out into the backyard. And so I think that's, that's been really, um, really wonderful. And also I've been doing a lot of cooking. I bet a lot of people have been doing cooking. In fact, I created a new a grain-free sweet potato muffin that I just wrote the recipe out for. And I can, send it to you so you can send it out to people. Yes, so right. this has been my big accomplishment of, of the last couple of days. <laughs> They're very good too. I had one for breakfast this morning. It's uh, delicious. Aww. How's it been going for you, Gay, with the creativity in this? Because it's almost like as an author, you wake up in the morning and you write and then you go out and then you come back home, right? You would go golfing and go work out, go out into the world. How is it... Um, having more time to write and are you finding it's creating more creativity or? I would say so. Um, I've just finished, I, throughout this whole thing, I've been working on a mystery novel. Uh, some of you know that uh, in my spare time, I write mystery novels in addition to self-help books. And, and I've got two different novel. mystery series going, one involving a Tibetan Buddhist private detective and another series that I've published three books in so far uh, about a, uh, a London 1908 kind of a dandy aristocrat named Sir Errol Hyde, who's very funny. And uh, I love Sir Errol Hyde books. And so I've been, just been working on a Sir Errol book and just finished it actually a couple of days ago. So yeah. I, I think my last three weeks or four weeks when I've been doing a lot of self-quarantining, I've probably gotten a lot more mm -hmm. creative stuff done because I really whizzed through the last part of the book. Uh, it's also been a time when I'm in the run-up to a new book, Conscious Luck, that'll be coming out in May. And so I've been doing tons of PR interviews for that. So I've been practically living on Zoom for the last couple of weeks. So uh, I would say all in all, I've been using it as a time of real creative output and having more time since I'm not going off to play golf or doing something like that with my time and the rest of the day. I often sit back down and crank out mm -hmm. a little bit more. Got it. So what, what are you, what there's so many teachings that you teach. I mean, the fear melters are always a favorite. I, I find myself wiggling and oozing and sumoing for all of all of my the fears that come up. But now I'm finding that the fear is lessened. You know, in the beginning, I was like, oh, my God, the world's ending, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I realized I was ending. The version mm -hmm. of yeah. was ending. And I, I went into that place of adrenaline and jumping into, you know, my fear signature is to fight and flee, right? And so I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about fear signatures and the fear melters. And sure. then um, any, anything else that you're finding works really well in this particular time of reinvention. Yes, well, one, one of the things we want to let you all know is that on our website, foundationforconsciousliving.org, we have a tremendous number of free resources and including how to find your fear signature, how to use the fear melters, but we have a lot of other things like our invention of many years ago called the harmonizer, which is a effortless way of meditating together, of sharing space together. And so you can listen to it through earphones and splitters if you're in a partnership or with family or with colleagues or friends, if you're not quarantining with them. <laughs> uh, but you could actually, somebody could listen to the harmonizer uh, in their space and you could listen in your space as a, as a way of really just creating connection. So wanted to let people know about that. Lots and lots of resources there. And also on the Hendrix.com website, we have a lot of specific relationship videos, which can, I think, be of great assistance. But one of the things I think is, is most valuable, even if you can't remember what the fear melters are, is that fear makes you contract. And then what you can do, if you find yourself contracting, I, to befriend fear, I do it a little bit more. So I can feel how I'm doing it. And then I let my body move in some different way. 
So you can make up your own fear melter simply by noticing where are you folding up and doing that a little bit more, noticing what happens in your body and then move in some new way. Yeah, to follow up on that a little bit too, uh, we talk about something now we invented called, you know how there's all this conversation about shelter, sheltering in place. Well, we came up with a new idea called sheltering in space. And what we mean by that is that, see, most human beings and most critters out in the world for billions of years now go to contraction for safety. If there's a threat out there, you know, people tuck in and tighten up their belly muscles. Or if you see a dog or a cat, they, their hackles stand up. So it's going to contraction for safety. But now we're at a stage of evolution Let's introduce a whole new thing, which is going to space for safety, making your new home the space inside you and the space around you instead of contracting. Expand when you're scared. It's a whole different way to go. And you can still have your contraction. That's been in there wired in for millions of years. But now introduce a new element of expansion when you're feeling uncomfortable or afraid or angry. Just open up and let it dissipate through kind of going into it and owning the space at the center mm -hmm. of ourselves. And you can feel that simply by going into your body sensations, noticing where your breath goes, letting your attention turn out inward because we've had so many years of our attention going out and being captured. This is such a great time to get that refreshment of this inner frontier and getting curious about what's going on in here and also what's going on in here, really listening to each other's experience. One of the things I think could be really valuable for, for people right now is to interrupt your own patterns. Uh, so for example, I recommend to people if they start to get into an impasse, drop the words out mm -hmm. and just continue with sounds and gestures. Uh, without trying to get them all into words coming out your mouth. So I think that could be really, really valuable. And also something that we call bodifying. Because rather than trying to explain, because you may not even know what's going on. Uh, you know, it's all becoming there's so much unknown. So you can let yourself just simply take a moment to bodify. Because we've been caught in this framework of of frozenness, this frozen fear that the whole culture has been in. So when we thaw that out and just let your body express, that can be not only really refreshing, but it can also jumpstart your creativity as well. I noticed that so much in the last uh, training I did with you in January, before all this happened, which felt like, oh, thank God I did that. But um, I didn't realize you, you said to botify what we do with this, like to pick a situation we wanted to change or, or we wanted to work with. And mine was signing the lease on this big building, you know, for magic hour. I was nervous and I was scared and I was in conflict around it. And, and then you had us botify and I pointed toward the thing I wanted, which was the building. And then I got, I, I bought it. I didn't realize I distract myself from it. I don't really want it. And I was using this like made up conflict about the lease to, to not want what I really wanted. And I didn't know it until I was in my body and you were saying face the thing. And I was pointing, I want the building. I want to open a tea, a tea studio. I want it. And then it was like, but botify what you do when you want something. Oh, yes. I go like this. I get busy doing something else. And I realize I'm not comfortable giving myself what I really want or saying what I really want. Yeah, so what I a great discovery. Modifying. And yeah. kids do it, right? Kids do it on a playground. If you watch a kid, mm -hmm. they'll make noises instead of words. They'll, they'll show their, you know, it's all in the body. But mm -hmm. somehow we think we have to talk through everything when we get older. Yeah, we get... Heavy. Well, one of my therapy mentors many years ago said, there's no such thing as a grown-up. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I love that. That's great. So, so gang, Katie, you have spent your careers, your lives as um, a joyfully married couple. A lot of people ask me like what you guys are like behind the scenes in real life. <laughs> and I, I always say the reason I adore you so much is you're always who you are. Like I've mm -hmm. seen you late at night, early in the morning, like you're always 
who you are. You always mm. love and respect each other. You always, so, so <laughs> what would you say as we're working to integrate these quieter parts of ourselves or these new aspects of ourselves, you know, what would you say in, in um, like how to, how to integrate all this new part of us so that we can be the same person in quarantine as we are when we go back out in the world or when we go to start another business or do whatever we're going to do, how can we take what we're learning now and, and move mm. with? Well, one thing, one of my favorite poets, Walt Whitman, has a line in one of his poems where he says, I am large and contain multitudes. And one thing I think we're getting an opportunity to do at this point is open up to more multitudes of ourselves. Realize that we have all of these different selves we wear inside the bigness of ourselves. And so I think it would be a good time to open up and really make a declaration and a commitment to using this as an opportunity to learn things about yourself that maybe you couldn't learn any other way. Mm -hmm. In other words, to get totally wide open to learning. One of the things we teach in our seminars is we have a openness to learning scale. And, and it's so important because like, um, well, I've been talking a lot about the new book, Conscious Lark, um, on all these interviews this week. And one of the interviews that we did for that book gave an, a perfect metaphor for how luck works. A lot of people think luck is kind of something that strikes them by lightning or they get born with. But there's a, a, a professor up at Stanford named Tina Seelig that's doing a lot of research on conscious luck. And she compares it to, she says, luck is like a wind. Mm. It's always blowing. And what we need to do is open mm. our sails mm. to it and kind of learn to steer it. And I that's love great. that metaphor. Isn't that a great metaphor? Yeah. Because I think that luck, well, I'm, I'm a raging pronoiac. I'm not a paranoiac. <laughs> I'm a pronoiac. A pronoiac is totally convinced that the universe is out to support them in every possible way. And so as a raging pronoid, <laughs> I go around the world just assuming that support is here. Support is trying to happen. Luck is trying to happen. And if I can just get out of the way, it'll happen exactly where I'm standing. And so I think it's a wonderful opportunity to open up to, no, to more multitudes of ourselves and really learn more about who we are and capture the, the true essence of who we are more and bring that out into the world. How would you... How would you translate that for somebody who's lost their job or they're waiting for the unemployment check or you know there's a lot of people right now whose lives completely i mean 16 million like that unemployed yeah. how would you how how would you say you know to move into that place of expansion and curiosity and knowing that it's for you not to you when you're scared of the basics you know or you're in that place of wanting to make it Work. Yeah, sure. Well, um, I think one thing that's really important and something that we've used for many years is turning what's happening into some kind of creative expression. Mm -hmm. So rather than trying to go from here to out there where you're not right now, which is how can I turn what's going on inside me right now into some kind of creative expression, whether that's um, drawing or um, singing in the shower or making uh, a great soup making a great mm -hmm. soup or or just the thing itself turning it into you know somebody was talking about dressing as their pandemic persona <laughs> you know like wrapping themselves all up and and that's also a work of art so we're always almost always seems like people are well if i could just get to this new place then everything will be okay if i can just sort of get through and turning toward what's happening and letting yourself not only be with that and listen to it, but listening to it with partners and friends. The other thing I was thinking about when you were talking with Gay is making a commitment to being real. Mm -hmm. So what will take you through and include all of the multitudes inside is Moving through that, oh, I couldn't say that, I can't reveal that, you aren't going to like that, that's not a nice thing to say. Mm -hmm. All of those concealing 
messages that we've gotten and the commitment to being real and seeing if you'd be willing in your relationships to hear what's real, to be with what's real, that gets you lined up. When, and when you're lined up, you can, you can move the sails. But if you're concealing and you've got all of these cross purposes, you've got the masts aren't up and the sails are all messed up and you can't really catch the moment. I also think you, you know, we keep harping on the using your body wisdom, but it's really important because when you're going through, I know times in my life when my money has completely disappeared a couple of times or mm-hmm. I've, you know, hit bottom. And um, I think the thing that gets you through something like that is just to keep opening up to the reality of however you're feeling and keep opening up to what's going on inside you instead of trying to close it off, to really be with it. You know, we've been getting a lot of mileage uh, during the pandemic. There's an old Latin word, pandiculate. So pandiculate your way. A pandiculate is what a cat does when it wakes up from a nap. It goes, and and so use your pandemic to pandiculate more, to actually feel it in your body and let it come through. Because what is happening, unfortunately, uh, like my niece uh, runs a big um, program back east for domestic violence, and she has 15 or 20 counselors that work under her, and they've all been reporting this tremendous uptick in domestic violence. You know, like to me, it's mind boggling that they took sports off TV, but they leave the liquor stores open. Yeah. You know, that's a bad combination to me. As, as, and make it essential, which yeah, yes. I thought was crazy. Yeah. 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 But anyway, don't get me started on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But what you're saying, um, you know, just to go back, I so appreciate that um, as something arises, like we don't know what's going to happen next, you know, is, is to go into the feeling and expand and stretch through that feeling because there's nothing next that we, you know, where the feeling is, is what's next and to keep, breathing into it and expanding is all we can do. We're really being asked to be present in a way we've never, ever been. I mean, it's an external, you know, demand that we're present now. We've never had that before. Yeah. I called to mind a a cartoon I used to have on my wall um, that there was a, uh, an elderly monk and a young monk who has just arrived. And the elderly monk is saying to the young monk, Nothing happens next. This is it. <laughs> so, you know, I think we need to take the this is itness of yeah. this moment and yeah. let ourselves feel it and be with it as much as we can because so much of it is the unknown. Absolutely. And also, um, even if you have a huge project that got interrupted that you want to come back to, you're only going to come back to it one choice at a time. Mm. And my sense is that this is a a wonderful space and pace for us to realize that each new choice changes the whole system. Mm. So instead of doing what I sometimes call jumping the mountain, thinking, you know, if I'm not up at the top of the mountain right now, I failed and I neglect you know, the step in front of me that I need to take to get to the next place, that each of our goals and our dreams is achieved really one choice at a time. And if I'm fully enjoying that choice, I'm fully present in that choice, then I'm alive and enjoying right now, regardless of whether I have achieved that thing that I think, you know, really expresses my value. I love that. And I, I don't want us to go back to normal. I don't want the normalcy because like you were saying in the beginning of the call that you were, oh, you were, would wake up with a sense of almost like dread. I was too. And I remember being in Singapore and, um, and Thailand and Southern China and all these places in Asia last summer. And, um, before that I was in Portugal and it was the sheer volume of flights and cars and activity that was open loop, you know, uh, releasing just more and more of the petro fuels and the air was so heavy. And I just thought, how long can this last? Like this can't last for very long. 
And so now I wonder how we might envision the future not using so many resources, but also being able to have a sense of, you know, being able to go out and go on vacation and gather, but what's that sweet spot you see or what's, what's the, the shift that you think will happen? Well, I think it has everything to do with speed mm-hmm. and adrenaline and shifting out of the way that our culture has been driven for over a hundred years by speed and the faster, the better and the more. So the whole consumption model is based on adrenaline and then we have to escalate the adrenaline and the adrenaline then leads to more fear and then we buy something so we don't feel afraid for a moment and then we're back in the cycle again. And what we have taught people and we have it on the, we have the video to teach you how on the Foundation for Conscious Living is Essence Pace. Yeah. And essence pace is moving at a speed. You can learn it for, first through walking, but you can do it really with your breathing, making decisions, is moving at a pace where you're aware of you and you're aware of the world around you. And most people are either only aware of what's going on out there or only aware in here. So there's no connection It's just like a bunch of balls in a pinball machine. And when you move at essence pace, there's this experience of being here while you're achieving what it is you're wanting to achieve. So presencing, and then you can connect, and then you can actually collaborate with people. So I think that this is a time where we'll invent new ways of collaborating that allow us to actually enjoy life while we're being productive. Both of us have come from this drive, you know, like the engine's just always on. And uh, having having retired that in our own lives before the pandemic, uh, we have some experience of the the beauty of noticing what's going on in every moment while I'm being productive. So I'm out, I was making the muffins yesterday, but I could also look out the window and see the finches coming back to the bird feeder and the rain coming and uh, the, all of the wonderful moments, which is really, this is it, you know, the whole, where are you going and what are you going to do when you get there has been so interrupted. I think people are probably still pretty much in shock. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with Essence Pace, I just want to, I want to unpack that a little bit because my last business, when I, I was working in publishing in New York at Simon & Schuster, and everything was about go, 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 get the next book, you're exactly. in auction. Like, it would be a Friday afternoon, and then the agents would send out a thing to auction. And it was like, oh, there goes my weekend. And everybody was working around the clock. And it was, it was such a normal thing that there was, there was this whole culture around, well, are you going to work this week? Like, well, you have to. You have to make an, an offer on this book, and right. it's going to take you all weekend. And there was, this, there was a lack of respect for time. There was yeah. a lack of respect. The only time I noticed that things would slow down was during Passover or during Easter weekend, you know, the holy days was the only time everybody would say, okay, we won't send out an offer during this time. But, <laughs> but you know, it was just a weird thing. And, I, and then before that with Gypsy Tea, I was like, it was all about like, okay, go national, go big or go home, right? I had that thing. And right. when, when we started Magic Hour and working with you on it, I got to actually see what is essence pace. Like I was addicted to building and going fast and I started to find myself wanting to go there again. But then I, I started to sit back and, and with essence pace, with the exercise, which um, we'll send out to all of you guys on the zoom um, via an email, but it, what the way that Gay and Katie teach it in action is, is you can walk really fast and you can walk really slow and you're, you're walking around a room until you find the right speed for you. And all of a sudden, when you hit the essence pace, it's like everything expands. And you start, like Katie was describing that essence, you notice everything, but you're also present to your breath and yourself. And and so each day I, I say like, okay, are we in our essence pace as a business? What is this? And sometimes I say, okay, everybody stop. It's time to have tea. And that's like, and then we get back into our essence pace. But what I've noticed is 
everything's sparkly and there's like a, um, I call it love and detail. Mm -hmm. Like the, the love is it like every detail starts to shimmer and expand and it's, it's very psychedelic. It's, it's like a very cosmic feeling to be in your essence. And I feel like this is yeah. It's a way of transcending and, and owning a part of yourself that's often been mysterious to you. You know, um, I always tell people that being in a hurry is a sign of encroaching mental illness. <laughs> and so whenever I catch myself, you know, hurrying through life, that's time to take a few breaths and ease up. We came across some research some years ago that all it takes is three easy breaths to begin to change the stress chemistry in your body. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself cranking along through life, just ease up and take hmm, three or four nice easy breaths because that begins to move that um, adrenaline and everything on out of your system and gets you centered again. Absolutely. And stopping and having a cup of tea really is almost my pattern interrupt for like the overreaching. Like I can't control that, but I can control this, you know. Coconut you know. chai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's also a great way of listening to yourself, nourishing yourself, but it's a pattern interrupt that doesn't blame, it nourishes. Mm. Oh, so I, I think this is also a great time for people to invent different kinds of pattern interrupts. You know, like the, the simple one that we were just, ex, you know, explaining of going a different direction for the walk. But what are the different things that you can do in your day that interrupt patterns that you have thought of as normal? I was remembering early in our relationship when I was lamenting not feeling like I was normal. And you said, you know, normal is highly overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God she wasn't normal. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're just having our 40th uh, anniversary of, of meeting each other here. And uh, so we've had 40 years to kind of work on these things. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't feel bad if they're uh, harder to implement. We're not suggesting that it's absolutely easy all the time. It just takes some practice, though. And one thing I wanted to mention also is that um, when Gay and I got together, some of you may know this, but many people don't know, when we got together, we had, uh, I had $327 and a Mustang that leaked oil, <laughs> and Gay had just had his American Express card repossessed, and that was it. That was all of, that was our finances when we got together. They were very unreasonable. Their point was, <laughs> hey, if you're not going to pay us every month, we're not going to keep you, letting you use the card, and I thought, that's just terrible, you know? And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, it took us a few months to get back on our feet again, but one of the things that um, we talk about in this new book, Conscious Luck, is this is a good time to develop what I call luck work goals. Mm -hmm. uh, luck it'd be a good time to now kind of settle down into mm -hmm. yourself since you've got some extra time. And let's say you've lost your job or you're down to your last little bit of money. It's really terrifying, but it's also a tremendous time to open up and find out what you really want and kind of reprogram yourself to go for those things that are really essential. You know, when I first I, I caught on to this idea many years ago that I was only doing about 10% of my time in what I then called my, my z uh, zone of genius. And I now call it the genius spiral has more of an open-ended feel to it. But I realized, wait a minute, I'm only spending one hour out of every 10 hours on doing the stuff that I really love to do. And so I started focusing on adding a little bit more each day and each year to doing more of what I most love to do. And pretty soon, you know, like by the end of the 1990s, I was doing 90% of my time was in the things I most love to do. But it, it takes little daily mm -hmm. consistent commitments to keep it moving all the time. It's not like a big whoosh and you wake up and you're, genius spiral, but it's little choices yeah. at a time. You know, the choice to sit down and write a poem instead of eat a brownie. Or um, not that there's anything wrong are you with looking, Are you watching me when no one's around? You know, what we found is it really only takes 10 minutes a day. 
where you let yourself do what you really love to do. And you might find all of these different voices coming up. Oh, you couldn't possibly make a living doing that. Uh, and um, nobody's going to want to buy that. And you can then just uh, breathe with and love those. But if you give yourself 10 minutes a day where you do what you love to do, that will begin to expand and begin to fuel that genius spiral and, uh, and give you that sense of, of being creative throughout your whole day. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I know we had a couple questions. Um, oh, great. Yeah. That were uh, emailed to me before. And I, if I forgot to answer your questions, love, um, or respond to you, um, Oh, Rachel, oh, Tisha, who's our host for next month's uh, Harmonize Your Home Box, says, yes, when that brings luck is the basis of feng shui. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Well, we've been feng shuiing this house for 20 years now, and yep. uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty tuned up. <laughs> yeah, and then Darlene's asking if there's a pre-order for Conscious Luck. Yes. Link? Oh, as a matter of fact, we just launched ConsciousLuck.com, and there's two bonuses there. Uh, when you pre-order the book, you can download these two meditations, a three-minute meditation for the morning and a three-minute meditation for the evening that are conscious yeah. luck meditations that um, you can download and put on your iPod or however you want to listen to them. They're really good, and I highly recommend them. They're free, and just go to consciousluck.com. Conscious luck, I love that. Okay, Alona, thank you, Alona. Um, so one second. So Alona says, I've heard both of you mention that when it comes to creating bigger financially in other areas, we need to re increase our receiving. Oh, yeah. That is where the focus or effort needs to go. As life keeps unfolding, I'm starting to experience the truth of this viewpoint. How do you personally do this? How do you increase mm. your ability to allow and receive? It feels like a skill. What practices do you do to improve the skill? Thank you in advance for answering this. Well, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. And here's a great place to start. In our seminars, we teach a process called wonder questions. Mm -hmm. And a wonder question is a question that you really would love the answer to, and you really don't know. Something mm -hmm. that's really important to you. And here would be a good place to start with a wonder question. And it would go something like this. Hmm, how can I open up my capacity to receive love and abundance every day? Hmm, a genuine, sincere wonder question. It's, it's not important that it produces an answer. It increases your capacity to wonder and it opens your capacity to wonder. And then it's like, once you start opening your capacity to wonder, more things come in that create more wonder in your life. And so I think human beings need to know that the antidote to fear is wonder. Mm. That the very best thing you can do is take a couple mm -hmm. of deep breaths when you're scared and say, hmm, what is it I need to learn right now? Or hmm, how could I open to more love in my life? Or hmm, how could I open to more abundance? Or hmm, what is my ideal new way to make money? It begins with a sincere question of just opening up and, and not trying to think your way to it. Uh, because see, if you could have thought your way to it, you would have already thought your way to it. It's unhooking that thinking part of the brain for a moment and going into the open space of the purely creative part of yourself. Mm -hmm. Which is really a whole body experience. I also like to add in, I'm willing. Uh -huh. uh, over the last few months, especially, um, because I stopped to, you know, I stopped my the major program I've been doing for 30 years. Wow. And because I, well, now I know I wanted to have all of this open space, but in the open space, I started having these fears come up of, oh, I'm not being productive and, uh, and I'm not making, I'm not bringing in any money and, you know, all of that. And, and so I went, wait a minute. <laughs> there was just a lot of debris yeah. coming up, but then I, I got willing to receive. And then I noticed when I would say I'm willing to receive. I'm willing to receive love and abundance. And then I would notice what happened in my body because that was the opening for what either wanted to be experienced or felt 
or expressed, communicated about. And I've been noticing that I have been receiving. So like every day there's an, op one of my wonderings is I, I, I wonder how I can be of service yeah. while I'm here. And every day something has arisen that I can turn my attention to that gives me a chance to be creative and to contribute and enjoying receiving and exchanging energy. So I think both of those wondering and willingness because will you know, I will, and the, all of the adrenaline that underlies that is kind of the opposite of willingness and letting the sales go where the sales need to go in order for, for you to really have a maximum fabulous experience and not waiting until you get there. <laughs> well, thank you so much to both of you. I think there is one um, question. What is that beautiful painting behind you? I saw that going by. That beautiful <laughs> painting is by an artist uh, who lives in Austin, whose name is Roy James. And I fell in love with it. One of our friends had this in her living room many years ago, and I fell in love with it. And I really, really wanted it, but she wasn't willing to <laughs> let go of it. And then about five years ago, she said, do you want that painting? And I said, absolutely. And so for those of you, when you go to the Hendrix.com website, you might see something that's kind of familiar because we took the colors from this painting and put them into the website. And the flowers that are falling. So that's part of the creative inspiration. Got it. And Jane says the book can't be pre-ordered from Canada. So um, maybe what you can do is, um, uh, did you read it? Will it be an audible? I, your your audios are my favorite. Cindy uh, says thank you for- Oh, I, I, I'm reading part of it. Okay, great, great. I read the first part of it. And then Carol, does Carol read this, the last part? Uh, I think they have a professional narrator that reads the uh, last half of it. Got it. Well, I want to just uh, close the circle with a blessing for everybody who's mm -hmm. on the call and to you, uh, Gay and Katie, for continuing to be such a beacon and such a model of what's possible in humanity. I cherish our um, partnership. I cherish your teachings every day. I utilize everything <laughs> like you know like a really good girl student <laughs> a really and smart girl a very smart girl and i i want to uh just send you um all the blessings and energy and all the light that you have shared in the world i want to uh hmm expand it and send it back to you for for infinite health and possibility for all the days. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Mm, same to you. Thank, thank you, you for being in our lives, for being such a bright light in our lives. And thanks to all the people in the community out there. And keep drinking that magic hour <laughs> tea, everybody. <laughs> you yes. made for a lot of love. And to all of you out there, thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we have another amazing guest and we hope to uh, have you back and uh, Saturday sips Fridays at four seem to be a thing and we're just going to keep doing it and I love yeah, you yeah. all and thank you for joining us and we will see you next Saturday and to gain Katie thank you thank bye you. everyone bye bye